Okay, so yesterday we went through and took a look at lesson 17, and we did the first part, and we came up with the equation of a circle. And so remember, we said in order to state the equation of a circle, we need the radius and the center point, okay? So, um, get back down here. All right, so given an equation, all right, the general formula is going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, all right? And what these points mean, these coordinates that are inside the formula here, is, right, that the center is going to have coordinates of h comma k, all right? And then any point on the circle... is going to represent any point x, y in our equation. Okay, so this x and this y in this equation is representing some generic point on the circle. So when we write the equation of the circle, we don't plug anything in for that. And then the radius, if you guys remember, in the equation, right, is the square root of r squared. So whatever this number is, square rooted, is our radius. All right, so we know that if I have a um, center, okay, that has, is positive 2, 3, so it's the point 2, 3, right, um, and the radius is equal to 5, then I am going to take these two points, 2, 3, and I'm going to plug them into my general formula, x minus h squared, y minus k squared. So because there's negatives here, Whatever I plug in is going to change the sign. So if it's a positive 2 that we're substituting into the equation here, okay, it's a positive 2 that we're substituting into the equation, it's going to become x minus 2 squared. Positive 3 is going to become y minus 3 squared. And then the 5 squared is going to be 25. So my general formula is going to be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 25 for that information. So going backwards, once I know the equation, remember that I have to then change the sign of the two numbers that are in the parentheses to get the actual center. So if it's minus 2, it's a positive 2 in the x. Minus 3 for the y here becomes a positive 3 for the y coordinate in the center. And then the square root of 25 becomes the radius, which is 5. So that's how we kind of take our equation and go back and forth. So today we're gonna to take a look at is what are some interesting like variations on how to find the equation of a circle? So it could be stuff like, what if they don't give you the center and they give you the radius um, and they give you, or what, what if they give you the radius and a point on the circle, how do you get the center? What if they give you the two endpoints of the diameter? What if they give you the center and the, and the end point of the diameter? So. Think about how do we kind of put the equation together, all right? And so you can see question A says, uh, what is the radius of the circle with center 310 that passes through the point 1212? So remember, if I want to find any equation of a circle, I always have to have two things. I always have to have a center, and I always have to have a radius. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? So... I have the center, that's done. The radius is going to be the distance that it takes, right, to get from seven or A all the way outside, all right? And so what we can do is we can use what's called the distance formula. So the other option is to use Pythagorean theorem. So we'll go through both of them. So the distance formula, okay, is this formula. D equals, and it comes from the Pythagorean theorem, okay? It's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So when I look at this first point, this is going to be the first y-coordinate. This is going to be the first, or x-coordinate, the first y-coordinate. This is going to be the second x-coordinate and the second y-coordinate. So all I'm going to do is plug those in, okay? And I do x2, so that's the second x, it's 12, minus the first x, which is 3, squared, plus 
the second y is 12, the first y is 10 squared, and then we just do the math from here. So this is 9 squared plus 2 squared, and this becomes the square root of 85. So that's the distance. That means that's our radius. So the radius equals the square root of 85, and the center is the point 310. So that's our radius. The second part, part B, says what's the equation? Remember, the equation is supposed to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, I told you there was another way to get that, and that's using the Pythagorean theorem. So for the Pythagorean theorem, what I'm going to do is just figure out how to get from 3 to 12. What do I do to get from 3 to 12? And that's, I just add 9. Okay. And then I'm going to say, how do I get from 10, the first point, over to positive 12? And same thing, I'm going to add 2. And so these two things become A and B in my Pythagorean theorem. So when I do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, okay, these two numbers, 9 and 2, just go in for A and B. So 9 squared plus 2 squared is equal to C squared. And once again, this is 85. And so the square root of 85 is C. And so what, what really happens is when you're looking at the graph, let's say here's the point 310, and here's the point 1212. 12. All I'm doing, okay, is basically going straight over and straight up, and I'm counting that change. So this is 9, and this is 2, and then I'm using this right triangle to get this distance. Okay, that's all we're doing when we use the Pythagorean theorem here. We're just counting the rise and the run, and then we're using that rise and run to get uh, the square root of the right triangle, and then we can just use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so there's two options to get the distance between the center and a point uh, on the circle. So part B, going back over here, is what's the equation? So now we have the center, right? Remember that was 310. So remember, when I plug in, I always uh, take that number and substitute it right in. So it's x minus 3 squared plus y minus 10 squared equals r squared, which is the square root of 85 squared. So this just cleaning it up. That means if I had any double negatives, I would make it positives. Okay. And the square root of 85, I know, just becomes straight up 85. All right. Now, had this been like a negative 3, when I substituted in, there would have been a double negative here, which would have made it a positive. So that's all that changes if there's a negative number. Okay. And there's our equation. And we're good. Going down to number 8. Circle with a center of 2, negative 5, and it's tangent to the x-axis. All right. So if you think about it on a graph real quick. Here's the point, 2, negative 5. All right. In order for this point to be tangent to the x-axis, this circle has to be hitting right there. Okay, it's got to be touching at the point uh, 2, 0 in order for it to be tangent to the x-axis. So this is a radius that we're looking for here. Okay. So we can easily count. The radius is just... You can count with me, right? One, two, three, four, five. So the radius is units of five. All right. So the radius equals five. There's our work. We just do the diagram off to the side. All right. And now we can do the equation. So remember, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, okay, let's get a little more advanced. I know when I see the x-coordinate here that if it's positive, when I plug it into the equation, it's going to become negative. So it's just x minus 2 squared. Okay, so now I notice that it's negative 5 for the y, so that means it's going to become positive 5 in the equation. And then I know that this is r squared, so I'm going to look at the radius, and I'm just going to square it and get 25. All right, if you want to, feel free to stick with x minus 2 squared plus y minus negative 5 squared equals 5 squared. And then you can clean it up 
which means we can do the double negative as a positive, and we can square out 25. All right, so it's up to you, um, but I'd like you to get in the habit of being able to identify that if this is positive and this is negative, what's going to happen to those numbers in the equation of the circle. Okay, number nine, two points in the plane represent the end points of the diameter. So what is the center of the circle? So we have two options. We can do the distance and just take half, right, to do the radius. But really what we want to know is if the center of the circle, so if my endpoints, right, are at negative 3, 8, negative 3, 8, and 17, 8, then somewhere right in the middle here, okay, has to be the center. All right. Now, what we know is that the middle of two things is the average, okay? So we just want to take the average of these numbers. So what we want to do is something called the midpoint, okay? So the midpoint formula is the average of the x's. So x2 plus x1 divided by 2, comma, because it's a point, y2 plus y1 over 2. We're just going to do the average here. So once again, the first point has x1, y1, and the second point has x2, y2. So x2, second x is 17, plus the first x, which is negative 3, over 2. And then the y, the second y is 8, plus 8, the first y, over 2. And then this turns into, so this is 14, 17 minus 3, Divided by 2 is the point is 7, and then 8 plus 8 is 16, divided by 2 is 8 again. Okay. So the center is the point 7, 8. Okay. I'm going to pause while this thing loads here so I get stuck with me. All right, we're back. So 7, 8. All right. And what is the center? We're going to explain it. So we just say it's the, the midpoint. of negative 3, 8, and 17, 8. All right, and what's the radius? Now we have to do the distance again, okay? So we're going to take the first point and point A. We'll take the center and point A. So the center, you remember, has coordinates of 7, 8, and this is actually really easy, okay? And point A has coordinates of negative 3, 8. So we can do that Pythagorean theorem again. We can see that the distance from 7 to get down to negative 3 is it has to go down 7 and then down 3 more. So this is actually going down 10. And then from 8 to 8 actually doesn't move. 0. So it's really right a distance of 10. And when you do the Pythagorean theorem, you'll get that. So Pythagorean theorem is going to be negative 10 squared plus 0 right, squared using parentheses to take care of those negatives there, all right, equals c squared man, this thing is going slow today, all right, just wanted to fix this too, so negative 10 squared plus 0 squared equals c squared, so this is just going to be 100, and then the square root of that is going to be 10. Okay, so the radius is equal to 10. All right, and we want to explain. So we just say the radius, the radius is the distance from, right, negative 3, 8 to 7, 8. All right. And then let's see if they have us do it. If they don't have us for the next question, what's the equation of the circle? Good, so they have us do it. So we're going to go back. So we know that the, the radius was 10, right? And the center was the point 7, 8. Okay? So remember the formula, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. So remember, we plug in for the center, we're going to change the signs. So it's x, it's 
positive 7 becomes minus 7. And then y is positive 8, so it becomes negative 8 squared. And then I square the radius, so that's going to be 10 squared, which is 100. And there is our equation. All right. We're going on to number 10 here. Consider the following equations of the circles. So we have two equations. We want to know what are the radii. So for the first equation, so there is no number here, right? This is supposed to be x minus h squared, but it's just x squared. Well, remember, to get in order to get x squared, it's really going to be x minus 0 to get that just x here. So if there isn't a number being subtracted, okay, if there isn't being subtracted from the x, because it's just x squared, it's not like x minus 9, then the center is just 0. So if it's x squared plus y squared, that means the center point is the point 0, 0. So this is going to become just like this. Okay, all right, and if this is equal to 25, then that's really 5 squared. So we know for the first equation, right, first equation, that the center is the point 0, 0, and the radius is equal to 5. In the second equation, we can see the negatives here. So remember, we have to change the sign, right, because it's supposed to be x minus h squared. So if this number is already 9, where the minus is, that means the center point, change the sign, so it's a negative 9 here. So that means when we write our actual point down, it's going to have to be positive 9. We change the sign, right? Plus y minus k squared, so it's supposed to be negative k. This is negative 12, so k is positive 12. And then this is going to be r squared, right? So this is actually 10 squared to get to 100, so the radius is 10, the square root of 100. All right, so the radii of the circles, I'm going to write it down, right? The radii are, okay, 10 and 5. The distance between the centers of the circle, right? The distance between the centers, so once again, we're just going to do our Pythagorean theorem here. So we have the one center is the point 9, 12, and the other center is the point 0, 0. So pretty easy to see. We're going to go up 9 for the first point and up 12 for the second point. So we just go with Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 9 squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared, and then we just do the math. So 81 plus 144, which is 225, and this is, the square root is 15. So the distance between the centers is 15 units. Okay, and then make a rough sketch between the circles, all right? So we can tell since the radiuses are 10 and 5 and the distance are 15, they basically just touch one point. So the rough sketch is going to be that if this radius is 10, right, let's say that's the second center, and this radius is 5, that these points are just going to touch one time. So this is essentially what the center points of the circle are going to kind of look like. All right. Okay, for number 11, this is basically a factoring question. So what trinomial, all right, which, which is the given circle given these, this equation? What trinomial, what does this factor into, right? And so remember, if I have to multiply to give me 1 and add to give me 2, i got to have two ones. So this is really x plus 1 times x plus 1, right? And for the second one, we have multiply to 4 and add to 4. We have to have two twos. This becomes y plus 2 and y plus 2. So this can actually be written as, and this is where we're going to get our equation from, okay, x plus 1 squared plus, and the second part here is y plus 2 squared equals 121. So the center of our equation, right, remember change the signs, so it's positive 1 here, it's negative 1 in the point, positive 2 is negative 2 in the point, and then the radius, okay, 
is the square root of 121, which is 11. All right, what did you have to do in order to get the center and the radius? Right, we had to factor, okay? So we factored. each polynomial, or trinomial, we'll say. To find the center and took the square root for the radius. All right, and we're gonna get into what we do with that a little bit more later. So we did some of these yesterday already. We're gonna go and do number five. <laughs> If you guys are near that, my daughter just yelled, I can't stop eating, and she's eating potato chips. It's kind of funny. Um, so the center point is the point negative 13 pi, and it passes through the point 2 pi. So we want to know the radius. So how far is it to get from negative 13 pi to 2 pi? So if the pi stay the same, the distance is just the x-coordinate. Thanks, Kate. Okay. So the pi stay the same. That distance is 0. Okay. And we go from negative 13 to 2, which means we have to go up 13 and up 2. So this is really up 15. All right. So the radius is just 15. So when we do Pythagorean theorem, 15 squared plus 0 squared is equal to c squared. This is 225. And then the square root is 15 again. All right. So the radius, A, is 15. All right, and then the equation. So remember, change the signs. So it's x, it's minus 13 here, so it's plus 13 here, squared, plus y minus, it's pi, so it becomes minus pi. And then the square of 15 is 225, it's 15 squared. So x plus 13 squared, kind of hard to see that, so we'll clean it up a little bit. x plus 13 squared. 13 squared plus y, it's positive pi, so it becomes minus pi squared equals 225. Okay, two points on the plane. Remember the endpoints of the diameter. So we're going to find what's the center, what's the radius, what's the equation. So remember the steps. One, we need to do the midpoint for the center. Two, we need to do the distance from the midpoint to one of the points is the radius, and then we can state our equation, okay? So, the 19th are staying the same again. So what's the middle between negative four and negative six, essentially? That's gonna be our, our uh, midpoint. If you wanna use the formula again, okay, just so we have it, it's the average. So it's 19, formula was x2 plus x1 over two, y1 plus y2, over 2, so it becomes 19 plus 19 over 2, which is just going to be 19 again. So 38 over 2 is 19, and then we get 4 plus negative 6 over 2. So that's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1, right? You can also say, since these two are both 19, it's going to stay 19, and then the in between 4 and negative 6 is negative 1. They're 10 units apart, so I go 5 in the negative direction or just use the formula. So this is the center. And then the radius, we just have to do with the distance between 19, right? We went too far. 19 Where were we? Okay. -1 and our other point which is 194. So We'll take 19, 4 as the second point. So the 19s are staying the same, plus 0. This is going down 5, which is negative 5. So if we do Pythagorean theorem again, 0 squared plus negative 5 squared equals c squared. This is equal to 25. And so 5 is equal to c when we take the square roots. Okay, so the center is the point uh, 19... 19, negative 1, the radius is 5, and therefore our equation is x minus, check the first point, 19, so minus 19 
squared plus y minus, and it's minus 1, so we change the sign to positive 1 squared equals 25. And so there's our equation. Okay, and I think we're going to stop there. You know, we'll, we'll do one more. We'll do this one. Why don't you guys try this one on your own, and then we'll go over it real quick. Okay. Okay, so remember we talked about the first time. If it's x minus x squared plus y squared, it becomes x minus 0 squared, so the center is 0. And then y minus 0 squared, so the center is 0, 0. The radius is the square root of 2. Here, remember, we change the sign, so we get the center point of 3, 3. The radius is the square root of 32. And then the distance between the centers, right? Remember, we count how to get from 0, 0 to 3, 3. So we go rise is 3, run is 3. So it's 3 squared plus 3 squared using Pythagorean theorem. And this becomes the square root of 18. So the radii are the square root of 2 and the square root of 32. And the distance between the centers is the square root of 18. Okay? And then why is it essentially, um, why are they tangent to one another? Kind of the same uh, deal. That the distance is the square root of 18, and these two are this, that distance apart. Um, with, the, with going, it gets a little weird. We're not going to get into this part here. So you'll never have to do this on the exam. The main thing we're focusing on is the distance between the centers, how to get the center and radius, okay? That's all we're trying to work on here today, so don't worry about part C. Not worried about it, okay? I've, if I were you, I'd be graphing it, and we can do that on the calculator a little later. All right, guys, thanks for following along today. Uh, remember to answer the questions at the end of this one, and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.